cooking is as good as ever. Even if there was no other reason, the food alone would be enough for Paimon to stick with you. <laughs> Changing the subject... Dane's taking forever. He said that there might be an issue with the nearby ley lines. How bad do you think it could be? <sighs> we came together, but... Now it's back to just being the two of us again. Wait, you're that blonde traveler who's on a journey to all corners of Tevat, right? Who's asking? Do you need something from us? You bet I do. <sighs> I was worried I wouldn't be able to find you. I have a letter for you, you see. It's from another outlander. He was a crafty fellow, let me tell you. Took advantage of a loophole in our mailing system by opting for guaranteed delivery, then filling in the most obscure mailing address I've ever seen. Well, we are always on the road, so yeah, it's pretty tough to get mail to us unless we happen to go to the post office on a whim. So, um, what address did that person give you anyway? Uh, he just wrote... <clears throat> Next to a small, white-haired, talking fairy. What? So the address is Paimon? Yeah, exactly, right? And if I failed to deliver the letter, I'd have been bound by regulation to compensate him. Really, he got me good. I count myself very lucky that I ran into you here. Of course, here it is. All yours. Come on! Paimon wants to have a look, too! in Sumeru. Hmm. Now that Paimon thinks about it, Crafty does describe him pretty well. From what he wrote in the letter, it looks like he didn't think there was much chance of it reaching us. Hmm. Or maybe he's just being sneaky. <sighs> Do you think he's making this sound like a miracle of fate so that we'd have to go meet up with him? Eh, yeah, you're right. It's always nice to see old friends. The letter says that he hangs out at Jafar Tavern every afternoon. Perhaps we should drop in on him then, huh? Thank you. 
I'll have something I haven't tried yet, boss. Uh, sorry, sir. I'm afraid you've already tried every type of liquor we serve. Oh? Well then, just the bill, please. That's just as well, I suppose. I do have other matters to attend to. Kaya, you're really here! Paimon half thought you were playing some sort of prank on us. Hey, Paimon, Traveler. Looks like the gods smile upon me after all. And come now, I wouldn't joke about wanting to see my good friends. <laughs> Wait a second. You must be here on official business, right? What do you think you're doing spending every afternoon drinking at the tavern? You itching for a lecture from Jean? <laughs> Not at all. The acting Grand Master positively terrifies me. Why would I ever do anything that might displease her? The truth is, I'm in Sumeru to learn about the alcohol industry here. So despite how it might look, I'm actually at Jafar Tavern for strictly business purposes. Sumeru's spices are famous the world over, and it's long been rumored that this fine establishment was where a certain very popular spiced cocktail was invented. That's why the Knights sent me, their foremost expert in alcoholic beverages, to come and see if it is as good as the rumors say. And? How did that go? So far, so good. I'm already in talks with some spice merchants in Port Ormos about some potential collaboration. Yeah, that does sound like a great business opportunity. Guess Don Winery and Master D. Luke are gonna make a tidy sum from this one too, huh? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Whether this lucrative opportunity gets passed along to Don Winery or not, Depends on how nice I'm feeling. <laughs> hey! Using your job to settle personal grievances isn't very nightly, Captain! Oh? What makes you say that? Very sharp of you. I wouldn't say I'm familiar, though. I just came here on the sly once, when I was very young. Hmm. And? Do continue. <laughs> Do I have to? When I said we could talk about the old times, digging up my past wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Well, all right, since you're so interested. Like I said, I was very young then. Don Winery had only just taken me in. I overheard my adoptive father talk about sending a team of merchants to Sumeru during a business meeting. I'm sure you'll agree that everyone's curious about their roots on some level. And my roots? They're in Conria which is said to have been located deep underground, somewhere near Sumeru. And so I stowed myself away amidst the cargo, and silently joined the merchant delegation on their trip to Sumeru. But it wasn't long before the merchant delegation received news that I'd gone missing. Their leader promptly found me, and before I knew it, my adoptive father was dragging me back home by the ear. It was a short-lived adventure, Sorry I don't have a more thrilling story for you. <laughs> Honestly, not much. The only reason I knew that Conria was near Sumeru is because I happened to read that in a book when I was young. My life had less and less to do with Conria as I grew up, and so I started caring less as well. I used to believe that I had inherited some sort of duty from my father. But then I began to wonder. Maybe my father left me in the peaceful land of Mondstadt for no other reason than simply to keep me alive. As well as ensuring that I'd be safely cut off from certain things, the thought that I might be able to actually live a happy life there must have been the icing on the cake. This is obviously all speculation. Simply put, I'm afraid that I'm not particularly in the know on this topic. These days, my surname, Albrich, is probably the only link to Conria that I have left. One death afternoon, please, boss. Tell me, what do you know about the significance of that name, Alberich? Dainsmith? Ah, you've decided to join us. I was wondering how long you planned on listening in. 
I believe I've seen you before in Mondstadt. Dainsliff, if I'm not mistaken. So you remember me? Then we are already acquainted, Kaya Alberich, descendant of the Abyss Order's founder. Huh? What? I take it that you weren't aware of this until now, Kaya. Or you wouldn't have been so forthcoming with your surname. Oh my. That's quite a lot of baggage for a surname, isn't it? Though I must say, it does confirm an old suspicion of mine. I suppose that was why my father left me in Mondstadt after all. I'm surprised that you take me at my word without the faintest hint of skepticism. Well, perhaps what you told me just happens to answer some questions I carry in my memories. And in any case, I recognize your eyes. You're a pure-blood Conrian, aren't you? Very clever. Forgive me for being direct, but I sincerely hope this new knowledge doesn't change anything. If you've already let go of your ties to the past, then keep it that way. Kaya, you're not involved with the Abyss Order in any way, are you? Hey, hold on now. This conversation has taken a rather sudden turn for the deadly serious. And I'm afraid that as someone from Mondstadt, I'm not accustomed to this sort of atmosphere. So what if I know my ancestry? Do I strike you as the type who would be bound by that kind of thing? Relax. I'll be just as delighted to hunt down the Abyss Order tomorrow as I have always been. Either way, looks like we're out of time. I've got a spice merchant to meet in a minute, so I'll leave the three of you to carry on the conversation without me. Uh, well, all right then. You go do your thing, Kaya. See you around. And Dainsliff, no need to listen in from the sidelines next time we meet. Let me buy you a drink. <laughs> you don't really trust him, do you, Dane? You're both from Conria, but you get on like oil and water. The fact is, I still do not know him well. It would be meaningless for me to jump to conclusions. But can a person truly be unaffected by their ancestry? This remains to be seen. Well, I suspect that they call your brother their prince, precisely because there is a succession of sorts. So if he was the founder, he'd be the king, right? I mean to investigate the Loom of Fate. Do you remember that name? Yeah, the Abyss Order's evil plan! We learned about that back in Mondstadt. Not new. Not exactly. My memories suffer from erosion. But while I was recovering my health recently, I suddenly remembered something. Your brother. He mentioned the Loom of Fate back when we traveled together. Apparently so. I was also quite surprised when these memories tallied up. I recall that we were traveling to Sumeru when the matter was brought up. So, you're going to the place that he mentioned back then? Correct. At that time, they must have been introduced in one way or another to this concept. If I recall correctly, we were somewhere in a Vidya forest then. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Maybe we'll discover some secret that's lain hidden for hundreds of years! No. Now is not the time. No, it's just... I'm still waiting for my drink.
Wait. This place, it's familiar. What about it? It looks pretty normal to Paimon. Was it like this hundreds of years ago, too? Yes. The forest has barely changed from how I remember it. There is very little human activity here, after all. Let's search the area and see what we can find. Is this... a field? It must belong to whoever owns that house over there. But it looks like it's been abandoned for a long time. You could be forgiven for thinking nothing was ever grown here. Or... wait... maybe nothing ever was grown here. It's an extinguished bonfire. Forest rangers, perhaps? Looks like it's been ages since it was last lit. And clearly they put it out carefully to prevent a forest fire, too. That's responsible. Nothing else stands out in this area. All that's left is that building. Come on. Wait, we're just gonna go barging in? What if someone's home? Unlikely. There are no signs of life in this area. We should be able to enter without incident. If you say so... Well, uh... You are in the way then, Dane! <laughs> There's a heavy scent of medicinal herbs in here. Oh, so it's a medicine bowl? Hmm. <laughs> Seems you're right. You've got a good nose on you, Dane. This bed looks pretty ordinary. Huh. There's nothing underneath it either. What sort of person would want to live here? It's so dark and damp. Can't be all that comfortable. Doesn't look like there's anything else worth our attention here. You sure we're in the right place, Dane? My memories are quite foggy, but my subconscious and instincts both assert that something once happened here. But we'll exhaust ourselves if we search aimlessly. Hmm. I hear noises outside. Let's go and check. Noises? Is it? It's not much. Just some minor adversaries. Monsters? Wow, Dane's ears are sharp, just like his nose! He's in surprisingly good shape for a 500 year old. Mm. Although, for someone who's as full of surprises as Dane, it's hardly a big deal. Anyway, let's beat up these monsters!
you're in for a little shock. For a little shock. You've been a naughty boy. Huh. Huh. Surrender and be gentle. a naughty boy. Let's spark things up a little. You're in for a little shock. <laughs> Closer. Blitz. For a little shock. <laughs> Try not to enjoy this too much. You've been a naughty. I doubt that the appearance of those monsters was wholly random. There must be something nearby that attracted them. A ley line anomaly, perhaps. Hmm. But it seems to be more than that. Okay. 
I'll go slightly further out to investigate any issues with the nearby ley lines. I might be a while. You should wait for me here. What? You're going alone? You better not be trying to keep some secret from us. Your suspicions are as banal as they are unwarranted. I merely think that this house should remain the focus of our investigation. And as such, someone ought to stay here and keep an eye on it. Not to mention that if even forest rangers are capable of investigating ley lines, I will be more than able to handle it alone. <sighs> Fair enough. Guess we'll just camp out here then. Good thing there's a bonfire over there. Let's make ourselves something to eat. All this running around has made Paimon real hungry. <laughs> as ever. Even if there was no other reason, the food alone would be enough for Paimon to stick with you. <laughs> Changing the subject, Dane's taking forever. He said that there might be an issue with the nearby ley lines. How bad do you think it could be? <sighs> we came together, but now it's back to just being the two of us again. You know, now that Paimon mentions it, we really have spent lots and lots of time together, haven't we? Um, so, don't take this the wrong way or anything, but, uh, do, do you ever get tired of Paimon being around? Oh, you stop it! Now you're embarrassing Paimon. <laughs> hmm, so, um, next question. Don't know if it's okay to ask this, but Paimon's curious. What was it like traveling with your brother? The... stars? Wow! Yeah! Hyman understands. Being separated without even knowing the reason why... It's just terrible. But we'll find the truth together. Sure as Paimon's your guide! Just you wait, Heavenly Principles! And you too, Tavat! Uh, you know what? We've talked too long about this sad stuff. Let's talk about something happy instead, because if you're sad, Paimon will be too. Alright, alright. It's getting dark, so why don't you rest? Paimon will take first watch. Don't worry, no monster's gonna come and eat you up. Oh, come on! Don't say that! Paimon just wants to look after you for once. Nighty-night! Go on, chew! Off to sleep! Hey, time to wake up. The sun has risen. What a deep sleeper. You do know that we need to... Hmm? Tear stains. You dreamed of your sibling last night, didn't you? All right. Rest here a bit longer then. I'll head into the forest to investigate. 